John chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, and then verses 14 to 18. It says here, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Verse 14. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about Him and cried out, This was He of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because He was before me. For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God who was at the Father's side. He has made him known. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you, God, for your word, the logos, the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. We ask, God, that you would manifest your presence here even this afternoon. May you speak to each and every one of us. May you move in ways that will change and transform us, that we may know you more and that respond appropriately to the one who is worthy of our everything. We give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may all take your seats. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Welcome to our 2.30 p.m. service. So glad to see all of you who are here on site. Kahit yung mga nasa taas, okay, medyo malayo-layo, pero kita po namin kayo. And uh, those of you who are also online, um, we are on our series entitled In Time. This is our Christmas series. But before I get into the word for week two, allow me to again greet everyone a very Merry Christmas. A very merry and a very meaningful Christmas to each and every one of you. It's been uh, a great, uh, exciting and challenging journey for this year, but we are faithfully and we are in faith in continuing honoring God and making disciples on behalf of the pastors and the staff. We just want to uh, thank all of you for honoring God, and making disciples, being involved in different victory groups, different ministries. So, pakibati naman yung mga katabi ninyo. Uh, uh, merry Christmas. In light of that, we want to invite everyone as well to join us sa ating Christmas Eve service. This will be a joint uh, Malate and Pasay service. Gagawin po siya sa Double Dragon um, somewhere in Pasay. Okay, that's where our, our center in Pasay is. So, meron pong dalawang service. You can join any of those services. Uh, meron pong on-site, meron ding online. Of course, those who are joining on-site, kailangan din mag-pre-register. Alright, so, uh, tuloy na tuloy yung Pasko. I'm siguro nagulat tayo, no? Ano na pala? Uh, parang kailan lang, wala pang pandemic, tapos ngayon mag end of the year na. But uh, this is probably one of the most unusual year for us. And uh, an unusual year, unusual season, unusual holiday. But I believe it is still the most wonderful time of the year. Of course, our Christmas this year might be very, very different from the previous years. But let's continue celebrating Christmas. Spreading less sa celebrating, sa celebration. But I hope we will have more of Christmas. Kasi Christmas actually means Christ and then Mass celebration. It's a celebration of Christ. So pwede yung celebration natin ngayon, hindi kasing lively ng previous years. Pwede wala yung paborito ninyong handa na may mansana sa bibig. Okay, pwede wala masyado yung mga, uh, yung mga gatherings that we would have wanted with families and friends. Siguro wala masyadong mga travel kasi nga we are still in the pandemic. But I believe Christmas is a season that is truly worth celebrating because of who Christ is. So in the midst of this crisis that we are in, I hope each and every one of us, including our families, will get to know who Christ is all the more. And dahil nga unusual year, unusual Christmas, if there's any siguro, uh, reminder for us during this pandemic, among you will agree with me that uh, it taught us to think of life in a different way. Diba nga, that life is so uh, fragile. You know, um, you probably know of people who have lost someone that they love. Uh, life is so valuable and precious on the other side of that. 
we can also say that uh, maybe life is short. No? Parang ang bilis lang ng panahon. Naka one year na pala tayo. And if you think of uh, tombstones, yung mga tao kahit years yan, from date of death, uh, date of birth, date of death kagad eh, no? From date of birth to date of death, Kahit ilang years yan, 70, 80, 90 years, it's just a small dash. Okay, ganun lang kaiksi, ganun lang kabilis ng, ng buhay. And, and uh, when you think about it, uh, life being fragile and the world that we live in, life is so broken. I'm sure you also feel with me that life is meant for so much more. We are looking forward to um, going back to the life in the new normal, na walang pandemic. Of course, forever, magchi-change na yung landscape. We want in a hundred years lang yata nagkakaroon ng pandemic and I'm sure it will affect us in, in many different ways. Hindi lang short term, but long term. But I believe that we are learning some valuable lessons during this time. That's why we're looking to an unusual passage of Christmas from the book of John. Tulad nung na-mention ko na last week, uh, John is unique compared to the different Gospels like Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Kasi nga, Matthew, Mark, and Luke were more concerned with the what of Christmas. Ano yung mga events? May genealogy, angelic visitation, kay uh, Mary, kay Joseph, sa shepherds, sa wise men, and uh, of course, you have there uh, uh, different stories of the original Christmas, almost similar, pero more of the what of Christmas. Pero pagdating kay John, he really emphasized the who of Christmas. And kung yung uh, ibang Gospels, they're also speaking about Christ. Unique yung ina-emphasize ni John. Kasi nga, if Mark is emphasizing that Jesus came from the line of Abraham and David, proving that Jesus is indeed the Messiah prophesied in the Old Testament. If Mark was emphasizing that Jesus came from Nazareth, a true servant of God, an unlikely town, okay, for someone great to really come out of. And then, kung si Luke naman was emphasizing how Jesus was from Adam, pointing to Jesus as the perfect man. Si John, from the beginning, from Genesis, uh, John chapter 1, verse 1, alluding to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, inexplain niya na kagad yung divinity ni Jesus. That in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And we looked at that last week, that Jesus is the pre-existent one. He's co-existing with God, and He is the self-existing God, the Lord who came in the flesh, the Logos, who took on humanity, fully God, and yet fully human. And He is the Lord of uh, in bodily form, the Lord of all creation, and the Lord of glory. We also... Uh, looked at how John, when he was writing this gospel, he was really emphasizing the purpose of the book. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which were not written in this book. Kaya nga, sa dami ng miracles na ni-record ni John, actually, seven lang yung ano, pinili niya. Seven signs. Sa dami ng miracles na ginawa ni Jesus. Okay? Seven lang yung ni-record ni John in his gospel. And he also highlighted the seven I am statements of Jesus. The personal name of God revealed to Moses, Yahweh. And we're going to look some of them in a while. And yung purpose ni John, why he was writing this gospel, John the Beloved, the apostle of love, one who was closest to Jesus, was that these things were written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that by believing, you may have life in His name. So kaya hindi na siya nagpaligoy-ligoy. Yung iba, ilang chapters, yung origin story, the first Christmas story. Kay, uh, kay John, from verse 1 to verse 14, the Word became flesh. Ganun lang simple Pero diretso kagad, He is the Lord. He is God. He is uh, someone who is worthy of all our worship and adoration. He is the Christ. He is the Son of God. And uh, He is... Someone who wants to reveal himself to us. And for what purpose? Ito yung second part ng purpose niya. Not just to know that Jesus is the Christ. Not just to know that Jesus is the Son of God. But that by believing, everybody say by believing, you may have life in His name. So connected to Jesus being the Logos is that Jesus was come the Word becoming flesh so that we can have life in His name. 
In fact, hindi lang siya sa verse 14, as early as verse 3, talking about the Lord of all creation. Everything was created, uh, you know, uh, through Him. And nothing was created apart from Him. Diniretso na kagad sa verse 4, In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. If, if I, there's one thing I want us to remember in this message, in one statement, kung last week, Jesus Christ is the Logos. Jesus Christ is the Word. Uh, this afternoon, I would like for us to remember that Jesus Christ is the life. Can you say that with me? Jesus Christ is the life. Now, the Greek word for this uh, life is the word zoe. And I'm going to explain that in a while. And then difference done. But in contrast to other Greek words that was also used in the Bible, not translated as life in English, Merong word na tinatawag na bios. That's where we get the word biology. Meaning the physical life. Okay? Hindi ito yung sinasabi natin when we say Jesus Christ is the life. Just a small part of it. Okay? Now, there's another word also which is suke or suche. And that's where we get the word psychology. Okay? That, that, that is the word that speaks of the soul life. Yung soul ng isang tao, the individuality of each and every person, yung mind, will, and emotion. And that is also important, and, and that's part of our whole being. But when we say Jesus Christ is the life, we're talking about the Zoe kind of life, and I will explain that some more. And when we say Jesus Christ is the life, di ba kanina yung binasa natin, uh, in, uh, in Him was life, and that life was the light of men. So, hindi natin lang sinasabi that life is in Him, but that Jesus Christ is the life. Life is from Him. Life is through Him. Life is sustained by Him. And when you think of who this Jesus is, Tulad ng last week, I hope we'll all realize, like, just like what John was emphasizing, that this Jesus is more than just a good man. He was more than just a miracle worker. He's more than just a great teacher. He is more than just a great prophet. He is more than just a strong religious leader. He is actually everything that we ever need and everything that we would wish for the Christ who has come to save us. That's why verse 14 takes on a new meaning. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Think about this. The Logos, the one who is manifesting the life of God, the Word, the tangible expression of God's mind and God's uh, will, the Word, took on human flesh. Doon galing yung word na incarnation, incarnate, God taking on human flesh. And He dwelt among us. And uh, can you imagine this God taking on human flesh and experiencing the life that we have here on earth? Now, when you understand the kind of life that Jesus offers, tapos compare mo sa life that we are in right now, a life that is broken, a life that there's so much pain, a life that is full of suffering, a life that is uh, uh, actually decaying. Think about this. The Word took on flesh, became flesh, so that we, the dying flesh, can have true and real life. Not talking about real life foundation. <laughs> okay, pero important rin yon. We want to bless the, the students, but we don't just give them life so that they can get uh, an education and have a better future for their family. That's why we also preach the gospel to them. Because in the gospel, we find a real life, the Zoe kind of life. In fact, this is something that's so important. For, for us to know, kaya nga si John, when he was writing the I am statements of who Jesus is, this great I am, actually tatlo sa statements na yun has something to do with life. Para magets talaga natin that if we believe in Him and believe in His name, this is the kind of life that we have. Kaya pagka hindi tayo naniniwala kay Jesus, if we are not in Him, we are missing a lot. 
Think of this, this uh, verse in John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? So this is Jesus in one of his I am statements. The great I am. Jesus was speaking to Martha and Mary, uh, whose brother Lazarus just died. In explaining Jesus, he revealed his I am, I am the resurrection and the life. And to prove that, he raised Lazarus from the dead. Ganong katindi yung life ni Jesus, life that is in Jesus, it can bring the dead to life. And not only that, he's talking about a life that is stronger than death, a life that is beyond anything that is of this world, the Zoe kind of life. Of course, another I am statement in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life, the Zoe kind of life. Some of you might be wondering, ano na ba talaga tong Zoe kind of life? What is it that is beyond bios? Not vios, okay? Kotse yun. Okay, although iba yung life nila, yung kotse nila. Okay, but uh, hindi, ano yung, what is this beyond bios, the physical kind of life? What is this life that is beyond the soul kind of life? Ano ba tong Zoe kind of life? I want to explain it in, in, in different ways. But first, I want to mention that the Zoe kind of life is spiritual, not just physical. Everybody say this. Spiritual, not just physical. Now, there are three kinds of words for the word life. Zoe, suche or suke, and bios. But interestingly, in the Gospel of John, John never used the word bios. And out of the 47 times in the Gospel of John, the word life appeared, 32 times, majority of it is really about the Zoe kind of life. And when you think of the Zoe kind of life, it is not just physical, although physical is important. It also speaks of the spiritual kind of life. Now, let me explain this, that when God created us, God created us in a different way compared to the rest of His creation. In the beginning, naalala niya sa Genesis, okay, when God created, He spoke things into existence. Let there be light. Okay, yun yung topic next week. And by the word that was spoken forth, things happened. Pero pagdating sa creation of man, God created man not just by speaking a word, but He took uh, dust and formed it and shaped it with His bare hands. Think about it. When God created you and I, He was willing to get dirty. Hinawa ka niya yung lupa, shinape niya. And not only that, He created us in His image and likeness. And more than that, He breathed life into the dust and that we became human Beings, living beings. And what that means is that we are more than animals because we are created in God's image and likeness and we have the breath of God. We are more than animals, but we are more than angels too because angels are spiritual beings. But somehow God gave us human flesh as well. And we are created in His image and likeness. So we are more than animals, more than angels, but we are not more than God. Okay? So, napaka highly theological nito in chapter 1, but I hope we will not get this. But when we think of life, we are only looking at life from this side of our world that is broken. Life is not happening the way God created them to be. Hindi natin nabipicture, naintindihan ko ano ba talaga yung life that God created us for. Only Adam and Eve experienced that in the Garden of Eden, in a perfect environment before sin entered the picture. Genesis 1 and 2, chapter 3, nagkasala na sila. So lahat ng uh, pinanganak after, nandito lang tayo on this side of life. And what we understand about life in the physical and in the spiritual is, is so small compared to the reality of the life God intended for us. 
So try to imagine this with me. In imagine, ano kaya ang life ni Adam and Eve when they were there in the Garden of Eden? And then God said, you are free to eat anything from the garden except from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That time, I could imagine, siguro sila Adam and Eve, hindi nakaka-experience ng gutom. Pero they could eat. Sickness, walang disease. Dito puro corruption of the flesh, decaying of the flesh, aging, getting sick and dying. Not only the physical side of, of, of the broken world that we're in, but also the spiritual side of life that we are missing out. Ngayon kasi pagka spiritual, parang idea lang natin, uh, uh, fiction, science fiction, something that is just imagined, something that is just illusion. But try to imagine Adam and Eve, as the Bible described them, they were walking with God in the whole of the day. They could see God face to face. Hindi nila kailangan ng visions and dreams. They don't need the scripture. They don't need prophets. They don't need preachers to, to tell them what is God saying. They could hear God talk to them directly. They could experience God in full 3D experience. Physically, uh, body, soul, and spirit in every way. Of course, nung nasira yon, what we have now after the fall is that we're trying to understand who God is. We're trying to work with the life that we have and somehow thinking that we could have life, a meaningful kind of life. We try to look for it in different ways. We're trying to uh, feed our bodies with whatever our body is hungry for and longing for. The same thing with our soul. And pati yung mga spiritual needs natin, hinahanap natin kung saan saan. But the word of God is saying is that apart from God, we are really dead. Apart from Christ, we are spiritually hungry and thirsty and not really satisfied body, soul, and spirit. But every now and then, God, by His grace, would appear and He would send His Spirit, especially sa mga tao in the Old Testament, and they would do amazing stuff. They would do amazing things. May divine wisdom that comes from God. May mga divine strength that comes from God. And talagang, wow, that's, that's real life. That's an exciting life. That's an exciting adventure. My purpose is God. May, may meaning in this life. And of course, we stumble and fall again and we miss that. Finally, when Jesus came in the flesh, the anointed one, the one in whom the Spirit of God dwells, pinakita niya, this is the way. This is the truth. This is the life. This is the manifestation of what life is supposed to be. And Jesus would do great and amazing things, ruling and reigning as God intended for man in the Garden of Eden over nature, over, over uh, you know, sickness and disease, over even evil spirits and everything. Tapos, yung mga disciples talaga na amazed kay Jesus. Wow, ikaw talaga yung Christ. And then Jesus would even say, these things that I'm doing, you will do even greater things than this. Kaya nga, marami sa atin siguro, when we think of being a Christian, yes, I already have the life that God promised. Pero I just want to encourage you, there's so much more in the life that Jesus offers to us. It is a life that is full of meaning and significance and excitement in every way. Body, soul, and spirit. Kaya nga yung mga Greeks, ang idea nila ng logos, puro, uh, you know, the ultimate reason, logic, logos, yun yung idea nila. It's just an impersonal force that makes things the way they are. Why the cow is brown and the grass is green and why the milk is white. And we don't know why a brown cow will eat the green grass and produce a white milk and why after a time, the white milk will become yellow pag napanis. And then for them, that's just logos. But John was writing to them that this impersonal force that you think you, you just uh, end as the ultimate reason and cause for all things is actually a personal God who has come, who wanted us to know Him who wanted us to experience Him. And by experiencing Him and knowing Him, we can have the life that was meant for us. Now we can have a life that has meaning, a life that has purpose, the life that has an ultimate reason, and which is we're created for Him and for the glory of God. Kaya yung life na in-offer ni Jesus, hindi lang to puro physical, although He cares for our physical bodies. Hindi lang siya for the psychology, although He cares for our mind, what goes on in our mind, our will, and our emotions, but He cares for our 
whole being. Not just physical, not just soul, but even the spiritual. That's why when we come to him, even with our dying flesh, we can trust that Jesus, you're the resurrection and the life. You can give me life that's stronger than death. That we could come to him with our dying will and mind and emotions and, and, and maybe our, our dying finances or dying relationships or whatever, dying careers that we have. We could go to God and say, God, can you please breathe life into every situation? Because God wants each and every one of us to have life. And it comes by knowing Him and by believing in Him. As we continue in verse 14, sabi dito, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen His glory. Glory as the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So God is spirit. And we are to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And uh, God created us to have life. And yung life na yun, the Zoe kind of life. Hindi lang physical, hindi lang soul, but a spiritual kind of life. So that we could connect with God, the real life source. Not just the food that we eat. Not just the garden uh, provision, but God Himself. And when God created us, He created us in image and likeness. And one characteristic of God is that God is a relationship. Kaya nga merong Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they have this perfect relationship, perfect unity. Hindi malungkot si God na siya lang mag-isa. Sige, gawa na lang ako ng tao kasi kawawa naman ako, mag-isa lang ako. No, He is relationship in Himself. Now, some of you might wondering, eh, yung son, later on lang yan. Well, the Bible says He's the eternal father. Walang eternal father kung walang eternal son. So now we are being revealed that this Jesus is uh, the Son revealing to us who the Father is, full of grace and full of truth. And when we go back to what we read a while ago in chapter 14, verse 6, diba? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Life is in Jesus. It's from Jesus. It's through Jesus. And it's sustained by Jesus. And look at this in verse 7. If you have known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you do know him and have seen him. And the one aspect of this Zoe kind of life, hindi lang yung spiritual, not just physical, but that it is also relational, not just existential. For us, kasi parang idea natin ng life is just, I'm existing. I'm I'm moving. Hindi ako inanimate object. I'm a, I'm a moving being. Must be alive. But we were created for relationship. We are created social beings. That's why God, who was there with Adam, said, it is not good for a man to be alone. Let me make a helper suitable for him. Ibig sabihin, si God, the father son in relationship, they're enjoying this kind of relationship, this unity, this harmony, this love relationship na, that is a, a perfect love example. So, create si Adam. Desire ni Lord, sana may experience din ni Adam what it means to have someone like him but different from him and have this intimacy and closeness. Kaya pagka bigay kay Eve and Adam, di ba, the two becomes one flesh. What unity, what harmony, what love, what, what intimacy and closeness. Man doesn't have to be alone anymore. Nagkamali lang si, si man kasi nga, instead of listening to the word, the logos, and obeying the word, Adam and Eve started listening to another voice. And when they sinned, they may have each other, Adam and Eve, pero nakat of yung relationship nila sa life source, and now their relationship with God is broken, and they cannot make their relationship with one another work. Imagine nyo ba anong buhay ni Adam and Eve after the fall? <laughs> siguro nagsisiyan, ikaw kasi, nakinig ka sa serpent. At sabihin siguro ni Eve, eh, hindi po sinabi sa akin na sinabi pala ni God. Wala kang ginawa, wala kang sinabi. Diba? And, and think about this, the next generation after, brother killing his brother. Several generations after, a whole generation, God regretted for creating man and wanted to wipe out. But in His mercy, chose Noah and the family to restart and refresh mankind. Of course, I'm not, I could not even imagine kung better ba tayo than the generation of Noah, pero God is being patient, not wanting for anyone to perish. 
Kaya gusto ni Lord, lahat talaga tayo ma-reconcile back to Him. To have a relationship with God so that we can make relationships truly work. And maybe that's one of the reason why nowadays napaka-common ng mga zombie movies. Gulat ba kayo na biglang naging common yung mga zombie movies? Whether it's train to Busan or or train to MRT station somewhere. <laughs> Di ba? Parang oh, zombies, eh, alive, oh, ano ba yan? Part 2, part 3, whatever. I think it's because more and more people are just moving but not really experiencing what real life is all about. Kahit lagyan mo ng love story yung mga zombie, parang uh, uh, life is not just the length of our years but how we spend life because life is meant to be shared with someone. And if there's anything that this pandemic taught us, that it's not really good for us to be alone. The quarantine, the self, you know, uh, isolation that we have, and for many of you experienced having having this uh, you know, symptoms, tas nagwari ka, tapos inaisolate mo sarili mo sa family mo kasi baka makahawa ka or baka mahawaan ka. There's something inside of you that's crying out, ah, I'm not meant for this. And that's why a lot of people are having struggles psychologically and even in their mind with, with whatever psychological challenges that we're facing because that's not what we are created for. It's not good for a man to be alone. And when the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, this is God saying, you don't have to be alone, God with us. And we may have a problem in our heart that's been ruined by sin. We may have a problem with our spirit that became spiritually dead because of sin. Jesus came so that we could have a brand new heart. So that we could have a steadfast spirit. So that when the more we know God, we can connect with God, then we can reconcile back to God. Ah, we will know how to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And we will know how to love one another as we love ourselves and even love our enemies. And then by the grace of God, we can make relationship work. That's why we can have so many people who have everything, pero pag walang relationship kay God, pag walang relationship kay Jesus, wala talagang peace. Because wealth cannot fill the void of what we are created for. Earthly, physical relationships cannot satisfy the hunger and longing that we have for the God who created us and the God who can sustain us. That's why it is my prayer for each and every one of us. Of course, I appreciate uh, everyone coming together here on site. Those of you who are still trying to connect online, pero ang connection natin hindi lang dependent sa internet. Ang connection natin is through Jesus by the Spirit of God. We are not just meant to exist. We are meant to have life and enjoy life with God and with others. Verse 11 to 13. That's why Jesus came, said this. He came to his own and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Kaya napaka-amazing itong Jesus natin, the Word, the Logos that became flesh. Why? He was willing to experience hunger. He was willing to experience pain. He was willing to experience suffering and death so that He could just give us life. Not only that, He was willing to experience rejection. He was willing to experience to be disowned and, and uh, not accepted for who he is by his own family, even in his own own town. And when he entered the world, his creation, the one he has come to save, kahit ni reject siya, he was willing to go through all of that. He was willing to be forsaken. And for what purpose? So that you and I can be accepted back to him. Not as a creator and we his creature, but now we can come to God and call him our heavenly father. Because now we are His children. Not because of flesh, not because of blood, but because of God. Not by our human effort, not by any achievement that we can make, 
but because of what Jesus did for us. Coming in the flesh, living the life that we could not live, dying the death on the cross that we should have died, taking our place. But of course, his life is greater than death. That's why he rose again after three days, just as he promised. And now by believing in him, his spirit lives inside each and every one of us. And we become spiritually alive. We become God's children. And we are restored back into that relationship. And what's even more amazing about this, itong Zoe kind of life, hindi lang siya spiritual and not just physical, hindi lang siya relational, not just existential, but it is also eternal, not just temporal. Remember, we are more than animals because we are created in God's image and likeness with the breath of God. We are more than angels, spiritual beings, because God created us in His image and likeness and with human flesh. Kasi si God, from eternity past to eternity future. But God created us in His image and likeness. We were born in time. Take note of the title, okay? We were born in time, but we are headed to an eternity future. But because of our sin, but because of what mankind has done, rejecting the word, rejecting the logos, uh, choosing a life apart from God, we are spiritually dead. But here's what Jesus did. The one who is timeless entered in time. So that we who are headed for an eternity apart from God can spend eternity with Him and experiencing the fullness of life that He intended for us in the beginning. Christmas is truly worth celebrating. Kasi kung naintindihan lang natin what He is saving us from, kung sa, sa Garden of Eden, feeling natin may na-miss out tayo. Kaya nag in tayo sa temptation. Now that we have experienced Jesus and when we eventually get there and see there, wow, it's so much better than what we've imagined. This is what I've been missing all along. Kasi lang, nadideceive din tayo in this world na parang idea natin na life of eternity with God is such a boring life because we're just up there in heaven, puro clouds and babies with wings and just a harp playing an instrument for all eternity. If that is heaven, that's so boring, nobody would want to go there. But if you can imagine the life that God has intended for you and I, what it means to rule and reign on His behalf and represent Him over His creation with the new heavens and the new earth, that will be an exciting time to look forward to. John 3, verse 12 to 17, familiar passage. Dagdagan ko lang ng verses before and after. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe. How can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Sabi dito, next. No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now remember, in Exodus, diba, because of sin, may mga snakes and people were getting sick and dying. And yung instruction ni Lord kay Moses, Gawa ka ng bronze serpent, ilagay mo sa stake, and whoever looks at the serpent gets healed. Okay, praise God for the healing. Pero example lang yun, kasi hindi lang pala physical life ang habol ni Lord for us. It's a picture of how Jesus will be lifted up on the cross so that those who believe in Him may have eternal life. And then verse 16, everybody from memory, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. This is the kind of a Savior that we have. A Savior was willing to come down in the flesh. A Savior was willing to experience the broken life and the broken world that we are in so that He can make things the way it used to be. So that He could save us. So that we can have the life that we should have. 
John chapter 10, verse 10 says this, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Kaya pala bumunta si Jesus here on earth so that we can have the Zoe kind of life and have it abundantly. I like the word abundantly because I didn't realize this, but when I study this, abundantly means, doesn't really mean getting everything that you want. Ibig sabihin na abundantly, you can have the Zoe kind of life when you put Christ in the middle, in the center of your life. And everything around you will fall in its proper places. That's what a full life and an abundant life looks like. Jesus came. So that those of us na nananakawa ng life, it's the enemy who's trying to steal the life that should have been ours. The life, every aspect of your life, the enemy would try to take that. The enemy would try to kill that. The enemy will try to destroy that. But thank God that Jesus came so that we could have life and have it abundantly. There are three I am statements of Jesus related to life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. But before I give you the third one, let me give to you this two illustration in scripture to reveal to us the who Jesus is kaya before the gospels nandun na siya is really there and yung plans and purpose niya was actually all throughout scripture hindi lang in the gospel of John the first illustration you probably heard a while ago I was talking about this the tree of life Think about this, when God placed Adam and Eve in the middle of the garden, meron tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but next to that is the tree of life. Remember what happened? Pinili ni Adam and Eve yung tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and because of their disobedience, they were expelled from the garden of Eden. So, ano nangyari? Merong cherubims with flaming swords guarding the tree of life. Hindi na pwedeng lumapit si Adam and Eve to partake of the tree of life and live forever. And maybe since that time, there was a question in man's mind, would there be a point in time when man can partake of that tree again and have life that God has intended for us? That's why we're trying to do everything that we can to reconnect with God and to fill ourselves with everything, but it's not working. The good news is that in the book of Revelation, in the end, we're given a picture of the new heavens and the new earth, and the tree of life is there. Wala nang tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You know who will be allowed to partake of that tree? Everyone who believes in Jesus, the life giver, the life sustainer, who was willing to take our death on a tree. So that the death that could have been ours when approached that tree, could be taken from us and we can be restored back to him and have the life that he intended for us. The next illustration can be seen in the Old Testament in the New Testament as well. It's actually the third I am statement of Jesus. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Jesus is the bread from heaven. In the Old Testament, 40 years, bread from heaven, flakes from the sky, the original sky flakes, <laughs> with the instructions, collect lang kayo enough for the day, every day, single day. For 40 years, can you imagine God provided for them in the middle of the desert? To teach them, man should not live by bread alone. In the New Testament, we have this Jesus being tempted by the devil. Just think, think of yourself, gutom ka na, turn this stone to bread. Then Jesus resisted that. And not only that, by the power of the Spirit, multiplied bread and fed the thousands, the multitudes, abundantly, baskets full. Pero yung sacrifice pala in the Old Testament during the Passover, when God led them to the uh, wilderness, during the Passover, meron silang Last Supper, and then Jesus on the Last Supper actually explained it this way. Itong bread na reminder sa inyo of of what you did when God saved you and how God sustained you 
in the wilderness is actually my body being broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We can have life in the midst of our broken world because we have a Savior who was willing to be broken so that we could have life in Him. And when we partake of the Lord's Supper, it's actually a picture of God not just being with us, but God wanting to be in us so that we could have life, so that we could be sustained by His life, so that we could have life to the full. Jesus, the timeless one, entered in time so that we could have eternity with Him. Jesus, the life giver and the life sustainer, entered our broken world, experienced pain and suffering and death so that by His sacrifice, we can have life, abundant kind of life and life to the full. We're going to celebrate communion today and what a very fitting reminder of the life that Jesus offered to us. And I want to invite us to worship God. I would like for us to all stand. The ushers will be distributing the communion elements in a while. We're going to partake of it together. Pero habang nakatayo po tayo and we're going to worship the Lord, I would like to first lead us in prayer. And if you're here today, maybe you're broken, maybe you're wounded, maybe you are sick, maybe you feel like the life is, is being taken from you. Ramdam mo na the enemy is stealing, killing, and destroying your life, your future, your finances, your marriage, and, and everything. And maybe you're surrounded with areas in your life that may seem like uh, pa, parang dead na talaga tong situations na to. I would like for us to turn it over to the Lord. Turn our whole lives to Him and trust that he is who He said He is. The resurrection and the life. The way, the truth, and the life. And the bread of life that has come so that we can have life to the full, life abundant. Let's just pray. Lord, thank You for who You are. Lord, we acknowledge Your presence here by faith. I pray, God, that You would help each and every one of us by your Holy Spirit, God, that we would see you like never before, that we would experience you like never before. And Lord, we surrender to you all the deadness in our lives, all our brokenness and emptiness, all our hungers and thirsts and longings that could not be satisfied. And Jesus, we look to you as the life giver and the life sustainer that your life is more powerful and stronger than death. Fill us with your spirit. We put our trust and faith in you. We believe in you, Jesus. You are the Christ. You are the Son of God. And you said that those who believe in you, Lord, can have life in your name. Life that is full. Life that is abundant. Life that is eternal. We thank you, Jesus. Let's just worship the Lord and let this be our heart's cry and we're gonna partake of communion. Yung mga communion elements are just somewhere on your seats. Uh, please uh, grab a hold of them. We're going to partake of it together. All right? Let's just worship the Lord for a while. It's wrong. 
prepare our communion elements you have something like this on your uh, seats let's just take the bread and let's just lift it up for I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you the Lord Jesus on the night was betrayed took bread broke it gave it to his disciples and said this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me Lord we thank you for your body that was broken for us so that we can be made whole we thank you, God, that you took all our sicknesses and diseases so that we could be healed. You took all our curses on that cross so that we could have your blessing. Blessing that is undeserved. Blessing that could not be achieved by any human effort, but a demonstration of your grace upon grace. One blessing after another. And Lord, as we partake of this bread which is a symbol of your body broken for us lord we are declaring by faith that we put our trust in you we believe that you are the christ we believe that you are the son of god that became flesh and dwelt among us we believe that you are the true bread from heaven the bread of life that has come to give us life to the full and as we partake of this bread lord i pray that you would release your healing power Release your blessings unlike any other. And may you help us day by day experience the Zoe kind of life, the full life, the abundant life that you have meant for each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord. For the God, the Son of God who became the Son of Man, so that we sons of men can become children of the living God. We thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, glory, and honor. Let's just partake of the bread. Let's lift up the cup. After supper, he took the cup, gave it to his disciples, and said, This cup is a new covenant of blood. Do this in remembrance of me, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are a God who is willing to die for us so that we could have life. You are indeed the resurrection in the life, the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, and your life is stronger than death. And I pray, God, as we partake of this cup, which is a symbol of your blood shed for us, Thank you, Lord, that because of the shedding of your blood, there is forgiveness of sin. Remove every guilt, every shame, every condemnation. And may you fill us by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may know you more, that we may experience you more in our lives. A God who has come to save us. A God who has come to make us whole, and complete and well in every way. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Give you praise, glory, and honor. Let's just partake of the cup. 
Can we just lift up both of our hands to God as a sign of worship? We're going to sing this song again. Let this be our praise and worship and declaration as a response to His goodness. Lord Jesus, we worship You. We lift You up. We lift our eyes to You, Lord. We lift our hearts, our voices. You are indeed worthy of all glory, honor, and praise because of who You are, because of what You've done. Lord, we are Yours. We dedicate our lives to You. May we live our life to the fullest with You at the center of it all. For your glory and for your honor. Let's worship Him. Let's praise Him. Pastor Richie was sharing a while ago, sobrang nag-resonate lang sa akin, Jesus being the life giver and the life sustainer. And uh, he shared about uh, Jesus, he shared about Jesus being the bread of life and um, his body was broken so that we can be made whole. And this season, a lot of people are longing for something. A lot of people are, there's this hunger that only God can feel. In the lives of our loved ones, our friends, our uh, relatives, and ito lang gusto ng gawin. I want to, I want all of us to have that desire, Lord. As I embrace and live this full life that you have for me, gamitin mo ako to share who you are to these people. Meron po ba kayong ganon na makakilala na gusto niyo mashare si Jesus sa kanila this season? If you're that person, I wanna be in faith with you. We, we wanna be in faith with you together as a church community. Can you raise your hand if you are that? Maybe you wanna minister to a loved one or to a friend or to your family this season. Share the gospel. Share Christ this Christmas. Uh, we will declare that. We will be in faith. Lord, thank you for giving us life. Thank you for sustaining us. Lord, it is said in another passage that curses anyone who was who is hung on a tree. You died on the cross. You were, you were hanging on the tree so that we can have life. And Lord, as we embrace who you are in our lives, that we will experience life, live to the full, we will 
we will just overflow. And Lord, gamitin mo lang kami, Lord. I pray for opportunities upon opportunities, Lord God, to testify. Na yung hindi lang namin basta i-declare with our lips, but our lives will speak the loudest, Lord God. It will be a testimony, Lord God, to our friends, to our parents, to our siblings, Lord God. At ma- 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 begin, may share namin yung love mo sa kanila this season, Lord God. A lot of them are longing, Lord God. They try to look for those things that they think will satisfy them but to no avail but we have this good news we have this gospel we want to share your love to them this so lord i pray for courage i pray for for boldness Lord god and for all of us to just be in faith Lord god that more and more sons and daughters Lord god will come back home to the loving arms of the father this christmas season all for your honor and glory in jesus name we pray Amen and amen. Para paano man po natin si God. Thank you, Jesus. So, po, yung mga nasa on-site po, baari na po muna kayong maupo. And um, please wait for the ushers to queue you uh, row by row. Lalabas po kayo. Um, kasi we are strictly applying yung uh, physical distancing and protocol. So, uh, pakiusap lang din po na yung communion elements po, uh, yung trash pakidala rin po paglabas nyo. Clay go po tayo. And eto, another thing, pakiusap din po sa paglabas nyo. Alam ko, miss na miss nyo na po yung isa't isa. Wala po muna magbebeso-beso. Wala po muna magayapan. So, physical distancing pa rin po because we value everyone's safety. And to those who are online, so, adito si Ven, anong gagawin natin? Yun, I, I just want to comment yung mga nag-stay sa atin online. Kanina yeah, kasi yeah. medyo nakat tayo because of internet connection. So, on And grabe lang yung word kanina, no? Na yung Zoe life, abundance of life. Knowing the what Christ did on the cross, sobrang, ano eh, yung fullness niya, even if we're seemingly facing a lot of ch- challenges or trials in this season, yung life lang din, the, the mere fact that you're waking up every morning, it, it is a, ano, a revelation na yung grace and mercy ni God is well available for us. I agree then, no? So... Also, we want to encourage all of you, uh, also yung mga nas online, if you are not yet part of a victory group. Yes. So even yung mga nandito on-site, baka hindi pa po kayo part ng victory group. Um, as the person who invited you, o kaya dun sa mga nasa online, we encourage them to uh, comment their victory group schedules. No? Baka merong interested, EMPM na lang. EM is the key. Yeah. And kung sila mismo, nakakita na sila ng available na schedule for them, pwede na silang i-PM right away yung mga yes. nag-post ng schedule na yun. Ano ba yung Victory Group, Ben? Baka may mga nanonood ngayon na hindi sila familiar. Ano ba yun? Victory Group is our church community wherein where we shared life, learn about the the scripture, and grow together. Yeah. Yeah. And ini-inspire natin yung isa't isa to continue yeah. to to honor God. But, uh, we challenge one another uh, to live out God's truth diba? on that yeah. uh, victory group setting. Yeah. Iba rin kasi yung may nag, ano, eh, nag-remind sa'yo or nakakarinig ka rin ng testimonies ng peopleness ni God sa buhay. Buhay ng iba, diba? Tapos ikaw din, magiging in faith ka lang din na God, I hope na makita, ma-witness ko rin yung mga ginagawa mo sa personal life. Yes. And, um, All talking about um, community, no? um, we had an initiative called uh, Bless the Community Through Love, Love the, the City. City. So hanggang today na lang po nag-accept ng uh, yung Noche Buena packages if you, um, kung may kumuha kayo ng mga bags last last time, sana po mabalik niya today. <laughs> yeah. Hanggang 4pm lang po. Hanggang 4pm. May time pa, no? Uh-oh. May time pa ba? Yeah, so, o kaya ang gusto nyo. 4pm na actually. Ah, 4pm na. <laughs> so, Habol ayan. Na lang kung may gusto sana na humabol, di ba? May grocery sa baba, pwede din. Yes. In fact, uh, nagpapasalamat tayo sa lahat ng nagbigay na ng donations, sa lahat ng uh, nag-support sa initiative na to. Actually, um, for the past uh, few days, nag-start na tayo mag-distribute. In, uh, mm. sila, kudos kaya Kuya Leovic and yes. uh, the Love the City team. No? Mm. So last Monday, uh, I had the privilege to join sila Kuya Leovic. Napunta kami ng Punta Santa Ana where we not only gave the noche uh, buena packages sa mga tao, we share the gospel. Kasi yun talaga yung main objective natin, to be able to share the gospel yeah. to them. 
And last next week, ayun na yung last ano natin, no? Um, youth service Ayan. for the young people out there. So, so kung may mga kamag-anak or anak-anak kayo na want to uh, makarinig ng gospel. So just invite them in our Every Nation Campus Malati page uh, every 5 p.m. Friday. Yeah. Pero next week na kayo yung last for this year. So invite nyo na sila. So to all the high schools and college students sa uh, ating online youth service. And syempre, di natin nakalimutan yung mga kids. Yes. Meron tayong Kids Church, kids church. every Saturday, 10 a.m. for the small kids and 3 p.m. for the big kids. So, uh, hopefully, you can uh, invite your kids to attend. And because every we, week. Because we value the next generation. Yes. Yeah. And every week, meron tayong one-minute highlight. So, you may use this to invite your family members or friends for our worship service. And uh, please do follow our Uh, social media pages to, uh, for you to be updated with what's gonna happen yung mga announcements natin and uh, with that again maraming maraming salamat po for joining us to those who join us on site and online yes. see you again next next week. week god bless you god bless you are my life and
Oh!